The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to learn about flip-flops, but not the kind you put on your feet. Nope, we're talking about logic devices packaged into ICs. Our last lesson was about multiplexers, demultiplexers, encoders, and decoders, combinational logic devices where the output is dependent only on the current state of its inputs. Flip-flops, or latches, are sequential logic devices which have a form of memory built in. This means they can use not only the data from their current inputs, but also previous data from their inputs and or outputs. Flip-flops are bistable devices, meaning their inputs and outputs can be at one of two states, a logic level zero or a logic level one. Flip-flops can be made using logic gates, and we'll be using them in our examples. If you're not familiar with logic gates, I highly recommend you go back and watch that episode of The Learning Circuit first so you can follow along more easily. We'll start with one of the most basic sequential logic circuits, the SR flip-flop. An SR flip-flop, or SR latch, has two inputs, one that sets the device and one that resets the device, usually labeled S and R. Its output Q will be at either logic level 1 or 0, depending on the state of its inputs. The second output, not Q, or sometimes also called bar Q or Q bar, is typically the inverse of output Q. So if Q is 1, not Q is 0. If Q is zero, not Q is one. If you remember from our logic gates episode, a circle on a symbol indicates that it is the inverse of the main symbol. Looking at this logic diagram of a flip-flop, you can see the circle on output not Q, indicating that it is the inverse of Q. SR flip-flops can be active high or active low. In an active high circuit, the inputs are normally low, a logic level zero and go to logic level one, high, when active. An active low circuit is the opposite, where the inputs are normally high at logic level one and go low when active. This SR flip-flop made of NOR gates is active high. Remember that the output of a NOR gate is high only if both inputs are low, otherwise the output is low. One input of each NOR gate is connected to set or reset, Notice how the second input of each gate is connected to the output of the other gate. This strange connection is essential to the function of a flip-flop. Since this SR latch is active high, the inputs are connected to ground, normally low. When the set input is active and goes high, it sets the latch and output Q goes high. If the set input goes low, output Q doesn't change. It stays high it is latched. The reset input must be active, going high, for the latch to be reset, returning output Q to low, its normal state. So an active set input sets the latch with output Q going high, and output Q will not change until the reset input is active, resetting the output back to its normal low. If set and reset are simultaneously active, going high at the same time, an invalid state is triggered, but I'll get into that more a little later. Just know that it's bad. First, let's take a look at the other type of SR latch, an active low flip-flop, this time made of two NAND gates. Remember that the output of a NAND gate is high, unless both inputs are high, making the output low. Notice the inputs on this flip-flop are set bar and reset bar. This tells us they are active low, meaning the inputs are normally high. With this flip-flop, Output Q is latched high when the set input is active, going low. Again, output Q remains latched high when set returns to its normal high. When the reset input is active, going low, output Q is reset back to low. So whenever set goes low, output Q goes high and latches there, until reset goes low, resetting the flip-flop. With both types of latches, the set input being active triggers the Q output to go high, no matter if the input is active low or active high. And the reset input being active resets output Q back to low. SR latches can also be gated. I'll show you what I mean. 
To make an SR latch gated, two two input AND gates are added, one each to the set and reset inputs. The second inputs to each AND gate go to a single enable input. Per the rules of AND gates, the enable input must be active for the set and reset inputs to be able to affect the outputs. If the enable pin is off, S and R can change, but they won't affect the outputs. As long as the enable pin is active, signals at set and reset can trigger the outputs. By understanding how gated SR latches work, we can begin to understand the two main types of flip-flops, D-type and JK. D-type and JK flip-flops have an additional input pin for a clock signal, usually labeled clock or clock pulse. This pin enables the flip-flop to be triggered according to a clock signal. The outputs flip-flop between high and low with every active clock edge. Active high flip-flops are triggered at the rising or positive edge of a clock pulse. Active low flip-flops are triggered at the falling or negative edge of a clock pulse. You'll also often find a data input. The data pin is an additional input that can be set high or low. The clock signal acts as an enable pin for the data input. If output Q is low and then the data signal goes high, on the next clock pulse, the data signal gets through and makes output Q go high. If the data signal goes low, output Q won't go low until the next clock pulse. So the clock acts like sort of a valve for the data signal. This data signal is considered to be synchronous as it changes the output in time with the clock signal. In these flip-flops, the set and reset inputs are asynchronous. They have priority over the clock signal and can affect the outputs at any time. While the data signal has to wait for the next clock pulse before it affects the output, as soon as set goes active high, it makes the output go high. And any time reset goes active high, it resets the output back to low. With D-type flip-flops that have set and reset, there's a potential problem that can occur. We know that set latches output Q high, and reset resets it back to low. But if both set and reset go active at the same time, the flip-flop enters an invalid state. Inputs Q and not Q, which should ideally be inverse, can become both high or both low. This causes the flip-flop to lose control of the outputs and their future states become unpredictable. Long story short, it's bad. But this is where JK flip-flops come in. Let's look back to our original model of a gated SR latch. In a JK flip-flop, the two two-input AND gates are swapped out for two three-input NAND gates. Having the third inputs of each NAND gate connected to the opposing outputs eliminates the invalid state. Inputs J and K still behave like set and reset, setting Q and then resetting Q. But if both J and K go active high, the outputs simply toggle. Boom, no invalid state. Problem solved. These circuits are considered sequential logic because the logic happens in a certain sequence. Makes sense, right? If you start looking for flip-flop ICs, you may come across some inputs that I haven't mentioned, like preset and clear. Now your homework, is to figure out what they do and how they work in the sequence. Report back and post your answers in the comments on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!